adjusted for ethnicity and you know class of income and stuff. And ah, rates of rates of diabetes in this country are about twice as high. It's in Britain, something like that. And, all, and heart disease, almost twice as high. It's close, you know, it's a staggering difference. And so, you know, I mean, the, the, the people that did this research, they didn't really, they just, they were baffled by this, didn't really. Couldn't understand it. Is it, is it, is it our wonderful national health system? Probably not. No, no. Well, well you know, my theory is, go. What, what's your theory? Well, British people drink quite a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good. That's correct. That doesn't Good apply, that doesn't apply to me. No, I'm not. I don't, I, you may notice I've got an overdeveloped right arm. <laughs> so no muscles there at all. But well, you know, the, the, well, they've, they've been trying to get. Yeah. I'm not the horse. horse. <laughs> but you, they did. Actually, I did test it many years ago. <laughs> well, you look healthy. You're very slender, I might say. <laughs> it, it's like the French paradox. The French paradox, because the French, you know, they eat lots of butter and. You don't get any fat French people. Red wine. <laughs> no, but they've considered, you know, so, I mean, you, you look into any of the factors, you think, what's that about, you know? What's that about? Could it be the food? You mean like hot dogs? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all that fine English cuisine. Yeah, have you been to Britain? <laughs> have you ever been to Britain? You know? <laughs> Eating things. <laughs> how, how was it? I, I shy away from it. I get, well, we all shy away from haggis. That's a Scottish thing, you know. Have you ever tried to get a kosher haggis? It's, just, it's not possible. It's, you, you, know, you know what's in haggis, don't you? Yeah. You don't. And we don't want it. Though. No, you don't. Really. It's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible. It's, it's tasty, though. I think it's tasty. So, yeah, they consider the food, you know. So, you know, then you get doctors who I recommend. Well, we recommend that Americans switch to a diet of fish and chips and. Uh, Meat pies. Yeah, do I, did you have any steak and kidney pie when you were over? I don't remember. Steak and kidney Oh, you remember. Because it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> you know, steak and kidney pie. Like the gravy you get out there, it's rich and it's nice. Steak and kidney pie. Pork pies, lovely. Lunch, a couple of pints, you know. Pork <laughs> pie, a couple of pickled onions on the side. Um, then we've got the steamed suet puddings. Very healthy, you know. So they considered that, probably for considerably less time than I've been considering it, because, you know, it's not really likely to be the food. Although fish and chips, you know, fish, good to eat a lot of fish, probably not dipped in batter and deep fried, but, you know. <laughs> and, and there are cultural differences in England, you know, because, I mean, I remember, I remember when we used to go on road trips with my family, you know, that um, we'd, we'd get far enough north before we bought any fish and chips, because in the south, those effete southerners, they started to use vegetable oil, you know, <laughs> to cook fish and chips, which is just not right, you know. In the north, in the old days when I was on that, they still cooked it all in beef fat, which is where you get the good tips. <laughs> kind of, kind of <laughs> detracts a bit from the fact that you're eating fish, which is supposed to be healthy, you know, eating fat of those Hey, tasted good. So yeah, it's probably not the food. And you know, they looked at all the factors like smoking, which is kind of comparable. It surprised me. They said it's like comparable rates of smoking in in, uh, in Britain to, to America. And I would have thought actually people smoke more in Britain. Did you get that impression? I mean, I think I don't know. I've I'm not been back for a long time. I give up. I give up. Uh, have we any smokers? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to self righteous because I, I smoked till, till what, about nine months ago. That's my wife over there. Meeting pictures of me. Hello. Hello. Leslie, she's a wonderful human being. Um, no, but uh, yeah, smoking. Uh, uh, have you heard this? No. Not really <laughs> so. yeah, so we, I don't think we told you today, though. Oh, no, you didn't remind me today. Yeah. But it is relaxing. It's a great stress reliever. Look, the drinking thing, that's a, it's an interesting. Um, Proposition. Uh, British people do drink, I think. We, we regard uh, Americans as, as amateurs uh, when it comes. <laughs> it's, you know. as, a, as, a, as a British friend of mine, we, I go over there sometimes and there's a lot of with, with the British guys and there's American people, and he has to explain to them that I'm not an alcoholic, I'm British. 
<laughs> Similar, but not, not totally related. But anyway, it's whatever we're doing in Britain, we're doing something that seems to... And I, I, don't, to, I don't know, did you hear NPR this morning? No, it was on this morning, but... Because uh, yeah, I thought, oh, I wonder what that's about, you know. It's not, it's not the food. It's, uh, so I think it's probably, it's probably about... Um, it's probably about uh, our attitude. Well, you know, there's, it gives you something to, you know, she just turned 80, you see? I mean, speaking of being healthy and living a long time, I mean, doesn't she look marvellous? Well, you see, she's going to be, she's going to, she's 80 now, she looks all right, and her mum lived to be 101. And Charles is pissed. <laughs> the Queen Mum, I mean, I miss it, because every year I'd send her the same thing for her birthday, you know. You know, carton of cools. <coughs> carton, carton of cools and a bottle of gin, you know. That's what kept her going up here. Mind you, you know, she had a, a, a bit of a privileged lifestyle, let's just say. But no, 101. So, you, you know, the Queen's probably going to be on the throne for another 20, 20? Could be 20, you know. I mean, they have a month or anything like that. So, and that's, you know, you've got to feel sorry for Prince Charles, don't you? What do you think? What a weird life. What a weird life. It's, you know, you've got this job you're going to do, but you don't start doing it till your mum dies. <laughs> so you're like, wait, you know, you spend your entire life waiting for your mum to die. That's weird. Weird. And then it's going to be, I mean, you know, it's, if, she, if she lives another 30 years, she'll go that way. You know, he's going to be incredibly old. <laughs> ah, you blood on the throat. You know, it's going to be. So yeah, I'm thinking it's it's something to do possibly with our with our war. Well, you know, it's funny because I think Americans like to think of themselves as being gay. Yeah, yeah. relaxed. Relaxed. You like to think of yourselves as relaxed people. You know, less formal than than we British people. But it's all nonsense, really. You know, I think it is. I think I think it's there's something stressful. And no, don't get me wrong, I'm not criticising the American way of life. Well, yeah, I am. Okay, um, yeah, but no, there's something stressful. People come to this country and it's all about, you know, you go get them, hop, 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 let's get busy, let's do it, you know, we're number one! That's, a, you know, I mean, that's, that's stressful, being number one, because if you're number one, you have to stay number one, you know, and you have to think, are we still number one? No, we're number one! Because, you know, Britain, there's something relaxing. You were number one. About exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. We used to be one of number one. <laughs> we don't know what we are now. We're like number 15 or something. We don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's much more relaxing. You've got no position to uphold in the world. We have an empire, of course, upon which the world, uh, uh, the sun never set, you know, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We've got, well, we got, you know, we got, we got <laughs> We've got, well, we've, got, we've got Northern Ireland, of course. <laughs> Bit of a problem. Bit stressful. Bit stressful having Northern Ireland. But yeah, so, you know, so why is it? I, I think, and, and I don't think it's like being lazy necessarily. Although, I have to say, in my rich and varied career and all the things I've done, I, I, actually, I actually worked, um, I worked at a steelworks. Once. I, I grew up in a steel town. Uh, town called Scunthorpe. <laughs> Bet you didn't go there when you were <laughs> Oh, it's a lovely town. Yeah, you, well, you know, it's a it's a depressed place now. Because, uh, see, when I was growing up, there used to be, uh, used to be what, 11, 11 blast furnaces there, you know, which is quite a lot. And now there's four. So, and it's a one horse town, there's nothing else that happens. So, but anyway, I used to, because we had that terrible, terrible socialistic thing um, with the steel industry back in those days. It was, it was a, a nationalised industry, you see. And um, they used to tell the joke on the steelworks um, that the, the, the British steel manager was showing the, the, the visiting Japanese steel manager around the works, you know. And the guy was like, uh, so, um, how many people are work here? And the British guy was saying, oh, about a quarter of them. 
<laughs> it's true, man. I used to get, I, I, I would hang out with these guys, and I, 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 sometimes I was not quite sure what the job was supposed to be. There was one guy, I, I think his job was like going off to the betting shop. You know, the other guys would be looking at the paper, you know, checking out the holes, he's checking out the JJ.